All right, today the project is going to be a set of dual transfer cases. This is going to be a product from Northwest Fabworks. And it's gonna go into my 2003 Toyota Tacoma double cab four wheel drive that's been solid axle swapped. Currently this truck has the push, push button four wheel drive shifter uh, with the factory, whatever it is, 2.56 2 to 1, low range. And the way this kit works is you take the guts out of a VF case. Now this is a VF2, and that's what the cases you can use. So they have varying versions you can get, and it just changes what plates you get from, from the company. So they've got these two different cases that are indexed together and can be clocked with those holes. So this is gonna be done for specifically for a VF2 to VF2 case, meaning the front and rear cases are going to be the same guts and same internals. So what I have here are two J-Shift manual transfer cases from uh, 96 to 2002 Forerunner, 96, basically 95 and a half to 2004 Tacomas from the 3.4 liter V6s, four wheel drives obviously and they're J-shifts, they are not the push button shifters. So these you know, fully shift all the way over to give you your low range, your high range, you know, your neutral in the middle, and then two wheel drive. So we've got two identical cases here. One of these, um, I'm thinking just because of cleanliness on them, this one probably is gonna get cannibalized and the internal planetary and low range setup from this is gonna get put into this case. This is gonna get clocked and assembled and bolted to this case, the whole thing, but in this one, we're gonna put a brand new input shaft, which also comes with the kit from Northwest Fabworks. To top all of this off, we've got a triple shifter, which they're calling their, um, they just named them just the other day. Um, they call them the Trident for the VF case. This is gonna be a low profile triple shifter that comes out in the factory location hole. It has a couple of offset shifters and some billet shift knobs for it. So I can manually shift my cases, no longer have to have the push button four wheel drive, so I don't have to depend on the motor. I'll, I'll, I will caveat that with that push button four wheel drive in the truck has never given me a problem, but I do feel a little more comfortable having full manual. So this whole video is gonna cover the entire assembly in detail. I haven't found another video like it on the internet yet. So hopefully I can walk you through exactly what's gonna happen. So. You know, for transparency's sake, yes, I'm just following an instruction manual I printed offline. But uh, to see it in video, hopefully it'll help somebody else out. So let's get started. One more piece of information I wanted to mention about these two cases. They're both 23 splines. They only come with the V6. I, I, I think the 2.7 liter engine in the 400s and Tacomas only had 21 spline. And the V6 only had 23 spline. So these are both 23 spline assemblies. Um, and I'm pretty certain that the input shaft is also 23 spline. It's just that they need to change it essentially from a, I believe it's a female end to a male end to engage with each other. And you can get these setups for varying Toyota cases behind, you know, varying versions of Toyota cases behind varying versions of cases in the, um, cases in the front, but you can get donor guts out of many different transfer cases. You're just gonna have to check their website to find out exactly what they have. And other than that, the, oh, the other thing I want to mention is these are both 2.56 to 1, just like the one in my truck currently. This doesn't give me a 4 to 1 low range or 4.7 to 1 like a lot of the Marlin Crawler, you know, in inchworm cases. But also, this is all chain drive case. This is not a gear driven like the older ones. In fact, I actually have an older one here for reference. This is a passenger side drop gear driven top shift top loader case here. And um, these are typically what you would see people putting, you know, 4.7 to 1 low ranges in. But this is all uh, Tacoma stuff. This is a little bit newer. Um, there's a lot of people talking good and bad about chain drive cases. They're definitely quieter running. We're going to find out. I'm going to put two together. They'll both be 2.56 to 1. I think that's the number. Um, you know, of course, correct me in the comments if that is, if it's a different gear ratio number. I think that's what it is. But it's just going to be two of exactly the same. So... Single low range or double low range, depending on if you get engaged one or both. So that's pretty much it. Let's get back into tearing these things apart. All right, I have picked a case. 
The first thing we're gonna be doing is replacing the input shaft on the rear case. So between the two, I've picked this one. This will end up being the case that is in the back of my truck uh, permanently. This will be the rear case. We're just trying to replace the input. So as the instructions state, it's to take off the input, or I should say front output flange. So you're gonna take that nut off and I'm gonna pry this off. We're gonna take all the sensors off of the top sides. Those just basically watch the shift rails in here to determine if it's in neutral, four wheel drive, or low range. We are also gonna take off the speed sensor over here on the side. And then we are gonna go around the case and take all these 12, 12 or 14 millimeter bolts out of that and split these two cases apart right here at this seam where you can see the RTV. I'm gonna pop that apart. quick tip would be to draw the shape draw the sh shape of your case as you go to take the bolts out so like this bolt right here it's gonna be the one right here next to my thumb you're just making a template and uh, drawing around it to make sure you know where the bolts go back and then I'm gonna punch a little hole with a knife pop a hole in these and then you slide the bolts into there so you can keep track of exactly where they went And if a bracket or something is bolted one with that one, I just keep it with it. <clears throat> There's a little tang here with two pieces of metal. One on the front half of the case and the one on the rear. I've got this fairly wide chisel so I can get it in between the two and if I tap on it, it's starting to split it. Hopefully you can see that in the video. There's becoming a crack along the cases, so I kind of need to pull on this side, keep it spreading separately. What's going wrong here is they don't want to pull apart because they're trying to pull on the shift rods from the front half of the case. On the instructions, it doesn't mention the fact that the shifter has to be removed. The photos and the instructions are showing a different kind of shifter. It's showing a forward shift style case, the one that have, would have the shifter up here in the back half of a transmission housing. This being a top load, top shift, I think I have to remove this. I'm going to pull these four bolts out and pull this out and I think that'll relieve my problem. All right, as you can see, I have the two case halves split. I started wiping this one off. I did notice there's now a ball bearing sitting in here. I don't know where it came from, so I'm gonna figure that out. 
and uh, then this is the rear half. My understanding is that this half is not going to get messed with at all. Possibly adjusting the shift forks, we'll see, for the triple shifter, but um, this, this fork would have gone into that hole over there. And this, of course, is on this side, and then there's the hole here where the shifter was that would have operated the two based on these little tangs up here. But there's the center. This is the input side of the case. It looks pretty good inside. I mean, there's a little bit of like a kind of a, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a sludge, but it's not anything that scares me. Inside of the case looks pretty good, and it wipes out. You can see down here, it wipes out pretty easy. So it looks to be in pretty good case. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks to be in pretty good shape. The guy before me clearly had drained the oil before I got here. So still looks pretty good to me. And we'll keep going. Next thing it calls for is to remove this uh, oil filter plate, inspection plate. It's going to be three 10 millimeter bolts. Still got my little marble steel stainless steel ball. I don't know where it went. This little knob just pulls out of this hole in the in the pump. That is a gear driven gear driven pump. You can see the the teeth on it down in here. I'm trying to rotate them, it's hard to do. But that has got the pickup filter, which it's got some schmutz on it, so we'll clean it up. And evidently there's a little magnet down here that rides in this. Let me scoot this over so you can see there's a little square at the bottom of the screen right there. That's where the little magnet rides. I will admit, there's uh, more metal in here than I'm pleased with at the moment. So, I don't know, there's a good chance I'll crack the other case open the same. I'm thinking that's what I'm fixing to do. I'm probably going to crack this second case open and see if there's any stuff like this. Because those are pretty big. Um, at first I was thinking it looks pretty good, but as soon as I got back in here where all the material had fallen, and I can see, I can't see it on the camera, these two holes here, the bottom of this hole here, you can see right at the bottom, and there's the same thing, there's more metal shavings in it, so I'll dig in and try to, I'll, I'll dig into the other case off camera, and we'll see which one looks better than the other, because I know the other one's going to have to get pulled apart the same way to do the, to, to pull the planetaries out, so... All right, I just got the second set of cases pulled apart. Initially, I haven't touched any of it. Initially, it looks pretty good as well. I did notice something. There's uh, only one of these holes in this main case, not two, or if you go to the other one. Sorry, bad lighting. There are two down in there. So, I did notice that. I have not pulled this cover off right here yet. And I didn't lose a ball bearing. There wasn't a ball bearing sitting in here. So I don't know if I knocked that out when I pulled the other one apart. <clears throat> or if it's a different, entirely different thing or what. Otherwise, the cases look to be the same. I'm trying to spot differences, but I see very few. This one's far cleaner inside. Goes to show. Don't judge a book by its cover. That one looked good on the outside. Guy said it worked just fine, had no issues. It's worse off inside and has metal shavings. This one's looking better, but I still need to pull this apart for confirmation. Let me go ahead and do that. Far less stuff on the magnet, far less stuff on the pickup. I changed my mind. This one I think will be my rear case. I don't see any benefit to using the case over here, given the slight differences. I mean, I just don't, I don't see the difference. Also, the entire shift assembly came out with this one, secondary shift rod. So I'm wondering if that ball bearing has something to do with that. 
All right, now that we've got the oil filter pickup and plate out of the way, we'll set it aside. Um, yeah, if I check down in here where the other one had shavings, this one has none. So this one's definitely doing better. Yeah, it looks much, much cleaner inside this one, other than all the dirt I'm throwing in it. The next thing it says to do is remove these three bolts, one, two, and three. Two, three. And take this oil pump out. Little wiggle. You get the pump. The gear stayed inside. Of course, this doesn't have any kind of key to it, any timing, because it's just a pump. It's got a hex that matches inside there, so I'm just going to Flip it over and set it back in. And I'm gonna leave these bolts with it. I'm putting them in backwards for now. They're just safekeeping. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is flip the case over and take off the front re bearing retainer plate. We're gonna take these five bolts, two, there's five on the face. You see them? One here, two, three, four, five. We're gonna take those out. See, they had green Loctite from the factory, and they didn't want those coming up. All right, now we got to pry this off and break this seal. Got to be careful; these are mating surfaces. You don't want to get deep up under there. To me, hitting on the outside of a of an ear, while I don't want to crack this off, if you're not getting to the inside of that, I, I'm not too worried about sealing problems in the future. You just got to do something to get it off. All right, up next is going to be to remove this large snap ring that holds this entire bearing in place and the entire gear set, the planetary set. Because that's what's this, that's what all this is. That's a planetary set in there that gives us our low range. Anyways, we gotta pull this snap ring out and then this whole set will fall through. We got a pretty cool specialty tool here if nobody's ever seen one of these. You can replace the tips on them just like any other snap ring. And it's got a threaded section in here with the, what do you call it? You can turn the end of it and it'll open the jaws up without you having to squeeze. So it's a little bit slower and more steady. Pop this out. It literally falls right out. So you can pick this up. Here's the planetary set with its snap ring. All right, with this low gear. This planetary set, whatever you call it. It says something about removing a synchro gear if it hasn't fallen off yet. It's a quote from the instructions. I don't see anything that's about to fall off, which is what they're implying, so I'm not really sure. <clears throat> but the next thing it says is to take the snap ring off right in here. It looks fairly easy to get to. So just get your pick and a screwdriver and pry this bad boy up. Before I fully pull this out, I don't think it matters. I don't see a count on the teeth, but I'm going to get a paint pen and just dot two spots on it. go got it out and now it says to remove a spacer I think it's a clip down here and we're gonna pull that all right in the instructions it said remove the snap ring and spacer obviously I removed the snap ring but the spacer doesn't I'm not sure how to get the spacer to come out. If I pick this up, you can see it kind of wants to slide through, sort of. I'm not sure how to get that sleeve collar off. This is a detent ball that can be removed. I'm not seeing it yet. Yeah, I can see it, I can see it in there.
Here we go. Evidently, this guy is the spacer that comes off. So this was above that. And there's a little detent ball right here, like a little ball bearing. And it was in that little pocket right there. See it? Right, right there. So don't lose that. We're going to set it aside. And then it says this input shaft will come through now. So we'll see. If I pull this up, I don't see anything else loose. So that's the input shaft for this transfer case. There's a thrust washer still on here that's separate. I don't see any other loose parts. All right, the next thing it says to do is to get that little thrust washer off right here. There we go. I'm going to maintain everything in the same vertical position like this, or at least these couple of pieces. So we're going to take this off and set it here. And it also says to take the these two bearings out, but obviously for us they fell out. In the back, that was the thrust washer there. And then it actually says to remove two oil seals on this guy. There's these loose, hopefully you can see it, it's got that split in it right there, the tip of my thumb. It wants us to get both of these off. Now there's the other one there. All right, I think I see the trick now. Basically, you're going to push down on one side and then run the other finger around like you're trying to like you're trying to push it up and around and it'll push the other side up and out enough like that that you can then walk your way around and get it out of the pocket, out of that groove. See there's one that's over. There's two that's around. We're just gonna keep walking it up. A little finicky, not impossible. That's gonna be my lower one in the same orientation. So there's my upper and my lower. So I think this is uh, the empty input shaft. All right, here is the new Northwest Fabs input gear that's gonna go into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my oil seal Make sure that this is free of debris. It is. Set that over that. And then I'm going to actually install it into the planetary. Do not forget, you have a little thrust washer. You can actually see the little rollers on the backside. Went, went there, then down. And there you go. You can see it engages in the whole set. Then I'm actually going to install the detent and the spacer because I think it's going to be easier to do now. See the detent's got a little divot for this ball. So there's our detent right there. We're going to put that in like that. Set this guy down. For reference again you can see our little a hole right here. Maybe this will help. So you can see our little hole and there's our ball. So we're going to slide it down and put it right over the ball like that. Now it can't change positions. And then our snap ring will go on next. The reason I'm doing this before putting on these oil seals is the instructions actually say they can be a little bit of a pain to get back on and they are often easier done after this is assembled. So we're going to do, do as it suggests. Get your snap ring pliers and pop this back down on there. I can see why they might suggest that because trying to get this over those seals is a pain. There you go. New input shaft is in the carrier. Let's just get these oil seals in. This is the lower one. And then once again, you've got to work your way around. They have these those two little tangs. Gosh, hopefully I can get this focused. There's a little knob on one. 
Now you can see it right there. And it gets like overlapped by the other one. So I'm gonna hold one and work my way around. There we go. They should look interlaced with one another if you get it right. Hard to get the focus. They're right there, they're interlaced with each other. There we go. Same thing on the top. All right. Now we're going to flip this back over. Reinstall our big gear here and it's snap ring and I've still got my double double detent paint marks over on this side. We're going to match those up because the other one is gone. Here at bottom out and then we're going to get the snap ring in here. There you go. So that's locked back in its carrier. All right, off camera, I cleaned up this mating surface for this front half of the case, as well as the mating surface up here for that bearing retainer cap. The next step in this is actually to install the planetary set back into this main case, which is pretty simple. So we're gonna take it the way that it is. We're gonna reach through, slide it through. You might have to wiggle it to get the bearings to line up. that and then it actually wants us to put the snap ring back on. I need, need to leave this on its side so it don't flop out of there. So we're going to take our bearing retainer clip and try to get it over this bearing. There you go. Next up this is the bearing retainer plate that would go on top of the input shaft. With the Northwest Fab Kit comes a new input seal that is a little bit bigger in diameter to fit over this input shaft, which is much larger. So we just need to pry this one off of here and I'll pack grease in the back of that bearing. That's a habit I have. And just replace this. We're gonna RTV and bolt this back onto the case over here. All right, I've got both of these surfaces cleaned off pretty well with some brake clean. And I just brake clean on the rag. I've already gotten all the old RTV off. I've got the new seal pressed in, as you just saw. I packed the backside with grease. There's an uh, O-ring in there. You definitely don't want it to fall out. Um, I've never had too much problems with or without the, the grease as far as having the, the O-ring, the spring, whatever you call it. It's a spring ring. Uh, I've never had real too much problem with them falling out. I like to use this stuff, the, the right stuff by Permatex. It uh, sets up real fast in one minute, but uh, I use this for everything. It's the closest thing that I've ever found to the form in place gasket maker that Toyota uses. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply a bead all the way around this and get this set up. All right. I wiped it mostly out of these couple little spots on the edges. And we're just going to go ahead and assemble this guy down on there. And it should bolt in right there. I'm going to reuse the five factory bolts. I don't know what the torque spec is supposed to be. I just go star pattern and snug them up. Probably, if I had to guess, probably something like 20, 20, 20 25 foot pounds, something like that. You just get a feel for it over time. There we go. That is the input seal back on there. All right, next we're on to the rear section of this case that we've been working on. This is the low gear, low range shift fork is my understanding. And this is a step that's only needed to be done if you're doing a triple shifter. 
if you are leaving this with a factory shifter in it, in the rear case, this isn't necessary. This would still be a, a J shifter. Um, but because I'm going to be using a triple shifter, it says in the instructions we need to take this shift shaft out, just this one here, and there's two things that need to be done. One is this roll pin needs to be punched out, and two, there's a detent Allen key needs to be pulled out here, and that's going to be that what's, that's what holds this entire shift pin in here. So when you take that out and that out, that whole shift shaft should come out. My understanding is that you're supposed to do this when everything is locked together in low range, which I'm pretty sure I am right now, because all of this stuff is flush, and this is as low as it can seat. I believe if you were to slide this shift fork up, you'd be popping it into basically what's high two-wheel drive, or high four-wheel drive, excuse me, and then the shift shaft would move over, basically. Down here is low four-wheel drive, up where the shaft can go across is high four wheel drive and then over in back down on this one would be high two wheel drive. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull the detent, knock the roll pin out and get this shaft out of here. That is going to be a six millimeter hex. Breaks loose pretty easy. I'm going to leave this detent in there while I knock this roll pin out. There's your roll pin. The detent has a spring and likely a ball. So yeah, that would confirm for me, that's where the ball came out of the other one when I pulled it apart. Yep, yep, that's where that ball goes is the shift detent. So when I pulled the other case apart, this shaft had slid completely out and the ball just fell out of that bore. <clears throat> now with that apart, this shift shaft should slide straight out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this high side, you see how there's a high, a high portion on it? We're going to grind it flush we're going to grind it flush with this surface here basically want it to look just like this one so we're going to take it down there and i may take it down a little bit on this side it doesn't really say that clearly in the instructions but i get what the intention is this needs to be brought down flush all right you can see even with that surface and i took down the nub on this side so that it's more or less the same plane every direction and we're just going to put it right back into the case interrupting this transfer case build from the future something I'd like to mention as an amendment would be as you have this case apart when it's apart if you were trying to do twin sticks or triple sticks this rear case there in this rear case you have to take what I'm calling a pill or a straight pin out of that rear case right between this shift detent ball and this shift detent ball on the back there's this little stainless steel pin that lives in between the two shift rails and what happens is as those rails slide forward and back this shift pin this pins moving side to side and stopping the other rail from moving forward and back if you want these to move independently you need to do more than just sand this off you have to take this straight this pin out if i go look at the other case it's clearer to show it Whenever you're working on this low, high shift rail that's right here, this guy, just all you got to do is when one of these is out and that shift, one of these detent balls is out, you take that shift rail out and this little pin, you see it slide all the way down in there, you just need to get it out. As simple as that. The way it works is on the back end of this shift rail, it slides and as it slides forward and back, that pin is sliding back and forth and engaging with one rail or the other. This has to come out for twin stick or triple sticks. All right, back to the case build. There we 
go. Then we're just going to put the detent ball back in the hole, put the spring back, and put our little detent cover back in. The next step on this setup is just to reassemble these two halves. Uh, to do that, it talks about the synchro getting lined up, but I'm pretty certain that I'm in a good position right now. So I just need to clean some of the old RTV and gasket maker off of this case surface. Do not forget to put your two rollers in. They just keep falling out on me, so I need to put them in there right before I reassemble. I'll put them inside the pocket of the other half. But I just need to get these two cases cleaned up and reinstalled together. All right, before I put these two cases together, I'm gonna to take these two roller bearings that I haven't shut up about, drop them back into the housing. There we go. Then I need to get the oil pump back on, which is going to be this guy. Pretty easy thing to install. Flip it over, it only goes one way. It doesn't need to be indexed, it doesn't have a timing mark. Drops in like that. There we go. And then you can put your three bolts back in. They're all the same length, so it doesn't matter where they go. Now we're going to take our oil pickup, spray it off with some brake clean, and wipe off the magnet. All right. And then there's already an O-ring inside of this oil pump right here. So you're just going to push it down into its little port, and then put these three bolts back in. All right, now with that done, I just have to add another bead of silicone around, or sealant around this face, and then drop the two case halves together. Some people go around every bolt hole, I'm not going around every bolt hole. I do not think it's necessary. It seals on the inside anyways. Sue me. If it's the wrong way to do it, I'll be the only one to suffer. So I will take that risk. Right, with the two cases together I've got a couple bolts I've got four bolts cleaned up I'm gonna put them around the case in various places to try to pull it together get some tension on the case to, and then I will try to shift it make sure everything is operating as expected so four bolts and it should be enough to test that you can see the RTV squeezing out all around the case, which is a good sign that I'm, the seal is going to be in good shape. If I flip the case back over, more or less right side up, like this, you can see that if I turn, the input shaft is turning. Let me get you all where you can see. Input shaft is turning. Output rear is turning, output on the other side is turning. Now, if we take a shift shaft, all right, 
That is high range two wheel drive, high range four wheel drive, over one, that is total neutral. Input's turning, but rear is not turning. Neither is the output on the other side. One more up, we low range, four wheel drive, so both outputs are turning. Back to here, high range four, over and up, high range two wheel drive, only this one's turning. The other output is not turning. So it seems to be rotating just fine. I'm gonna put the rest of the bolts in, and this case is done. All right, and just like that, we've got this case back together. The only thing left is to throw our couple of uh, sensors back in, throw our shifter back on, but because this is gonna be a triple shift, I'm not gonna worry about this just yet. It's gonna get one that uh, replaces it. Um, we also just need to throw our front output back on. So I'm not too worried about showing those on camera. Pretty basic process, the reverse of what you saw at the beginning of the video. But otherwise, this case is together and ready to go on the back half of the other case. So we still need to get that one built. Interrupting from the future for amendment number two. Do not forget to put a speed sensor back in the output of the transfer case. This original rear transfer case that I'm using for mine didn't actually have a speed sensor in the back. It used a plug. A plug that looked like this. My truck factory has a speed sensor on the back of the case, so I need this to still be there when the build is done. Luckily for us who build these, there is already a gear inside the rear section of this case. There's already a Speedo sensor gear on the shaft, so you don't have to do anything to swap them. I don't know what gear count that is in there, what tooth count that is, but if they're all the same, then that's good regardless. You just got to make sure to put a sensor into the back here. If you forget to put a sensor in, you won't have any way of knowing how fast you're going. All right. Now that the other set of cases are built, we will get back to this first set that we found the shavings in. I'm not excited about the shavings, but I'm hoping that the planetary set's going to be okay because that's essentially all I really need out of this case. That planetary needs to get pulled out and put in the other case. So we're going to go ahead and dig into it and hopefully it's still going to be good, but obviously the disassembly process to get to here was the same on both cases. We're going to keep going a step further on this one and get the entire planetary out. While this is out, I'm rotating around. I do not feel any worn or problem areas. I don't hear any issues. Rotates very smooth and free. I'm not sure where the shavings have come from yet. All right, this is the case that I just pulled that whole planetary assembly out of. And the instructions, it wants us to pull this ring gear out. And sure enough, this is called the ring gear then. Uh, early in the video, I said that I believed that the, uh, that would have been called a sun gear, but that actually is the ring gear. The sun gear then would have to be the one on the inside of this that these four these four planetary gears are rotating around inside. Those would have to be, this big one in here would have to be the sun gear because they're rotating around it. But it wants us to get this ring gear out of the case. To do so, we just got to pry out that big snap ring. There it is. All right, now that we've pulled this 
uh, ring gear out of this case. The last thing we still need to take, it says, is a detent pin right here for that ring gear. That would be the one right here that has this, there's a little ball sticking out right there that would be on a spring. So it wants that, it says it's gonna get assembled into the new case. So we're gonna take this bolt off right here. So this would have been where the shifter was. It's just down to its right passenger side of the truck it would be. It's gonna be a 19 millimeter. So it looks like that. It has a little recessed portion in it where the spring would live. Of course, there's the spring. And there should be the detent ball. Or detent pin, rather, excuse me. It's a pin, so when it's assembled in the case, it should look like that with the cap just behind it like that. It says we're going to reuse these, don't lose them. And now, I said it a couple times, this shouldn't be it. There shouldn't be else, anything else on this case that gets reused. Let's get this out of here. Now we're going to shift our attention to the shift rails, pun intended. First thing it says to do is to re remove this detent spring as well, which we did earlier on the other case. That's gonna be a six millimeter Allen key. All right, this is the one that we previously, earlier in the video, we previously would have lost the ball for. Rather, it fell out, I have it here. Um, but having taken them both apart now, I, I recognize where the parts come from. There's the spring. All right, next it wants us to remove the low range shift fork, collar, and gear. Since we pulled that detent pin out, this whole assembly will slide right out. This is what it seems to be implying we should remove, which um, I believe this is to be the synchros with these types of teeth on them. And this is the shift rail and the fork. And then it wants us to knock this roll pin out of this assembly again, which we already did on the other set of cases, obviously. Uh, we're gonna just go ahead and do that again. We're gonna go ahead and take the roll pin and the shift collar and stuff and set it to the side, these three pieces that we had removed. All right, on the rear section of this case, it's calling this portion the shift collar right here. And there is a snap ring holding it in right here. It wants us to remove that and then pull the shift collar off. All right, I just got that snap ring off of this groove. This was the hardest thing that I've done in this whole project so far. That was a very difficult shift collar to remove. I did it off camera. Um, a set of the incorrect kind of snap ring pliers and a couple of screwdrivers and just kept picking at it, got one lip up and then working my way around pulling it out, but it was very tight. The next thing it wants us to do is get a set of jaw pullers and pull this off. Um, that is so far, I think the only real specialty tool other than snap ring pliers that it's called for. So it wants me to pull this, sh this shift collar, it's calling this, off this now that the snap ring is removed. Well, the camera wasn't on for it. I used a two jaw puller and I heated up this thing with propane a little bit because it was on there really tight and crank, cranked on it until it popped it off. Instructions mention some sort of clip on this, but I think they're talking about like a VF4 case or I don't know. I'm assuming it's something out of a Tundra or a Sequoia maybe like an all-wheel drive forerunner, but I don't, I don't know that they made those. But either way, we've got the, um, what they're calling the shift collar off, the alignment collar. We've got that off like they wanted. And we've got the clip, of course, that came off before it. We're gonna keep those two together because I think they're getting reused on the new Northwest Fab case. All right, we're finally getting into the actual eco crawler case. This is the billet lid. Northwest Fab at least calls it a lid. It's got a big O-ring around the outer edge to seal the two halves together. And of course, the other portion is going to be this one. 
This is the face that mates to the rear case. So they go together like that. And of course they've got um, clocking pins in it so you can clock it uh, three different degree offsets here and then three different ones here. So I think it gives you like, I don't know, nine total. So you got one, two, three, I don't know, something about, I think it's like nine different degrees you can do it, either positive or negative clocking. Um, we will be trying to go as um, clocked high up to the cab as possible. At least that's what I'm going to attempt from the get-go. So the first step, it says to take this lid and it wants us to put the ring gear into it. Here's a ring gear. There's a beveled gear here at the beveled edge at the bottom. And it says to install that bevel down so that the snap ring engages the top of it, same way it was in the other case. This is gonna drop down into here. All right, with that ring gear hammered all the way down, we are going to put the clip for it on next. All right, over on this side, so the round is here, ring gear get pushed in, pushed in here. You can see the ring gear in through this hole. It wants us to put that ring gear detent pin in. So we've got our little pin again, we've got our spring, and we've got our cap. I used uh, the other little detent cap to make the socket not as deep so I could put more pressure on that. Now that we have the ring gear in here, it actually wants us to install the planetary set. It wants us to install it this way. Set this up. Take the planetary, slip it through. All right, with the planetary set sticking through there, we're gonna take the snap ring for it and get it on there. Now we've got the planetaries engaged with the ring gear. Rotates very well, nice and smooth. Next step is going to be putting our bearing retainer cap on which is the same one that we used before. It came off the original transfer case. Um, I'm just gonna clean up this seal, uh, pack a little grease into it behind it with my finger, and we're gonna have to redo the RTV gasket around here again, and then this will get bolted straight onto this case. Next, it wants us to install the shift rail. This is the one that came with it. It's in a bag along with this shift fork. I don't know, well, it's not really a fork. It's more of a retention block. So it can't slide out of this hole. And it has uh, the spot for a shifter to go into this little notch here. So it wants that to go in. Uh, I do see that there's an R4 engraved into it. I think I'm gonna set that in like that. There's also a roll pin. And it wants us a little grease on this and to install it through this shift shaft hole right through here, like that. All right, with this shaft in there, there's a hole and then a roll pin has to go through that hole through this piece. So we're gonna hammer the roll pin through. We're going to hammer that roll pin in until it's flush with the bottom, like that. Here you can see the shift fork. I spun this around, so now you're looking at the inside of the case. This shift fork is going to go into the case right there onto that rail. The problem is the material thickness right here on this fork is a little bit thick, so it'll hit the case. Instructions say to grind down right here where it's a little bit high and you can see it's like a factory casting. It wants me to sand this whole face down until that fits. So it can fit in the case right there, right on that shaft. This shift fork, you can see I sanded the backside right here. 
just barely chamfered this sharp edge and got it cleaned up and ready to be installed. We're gonna take the fork and the collar that went with the fork, put them together like that. The pinhole will be towards the outside. This entire extrusion where it sticks out from center line of the fork is gonna be towards the outside. And then you're gonna slide this shaft through this shift fork. We'll put a little grease in there. So there's a the shaft. The fork is gonna go on that shaft and the gear stays with it. And we just gotta get it to mesh down in like that. And now they're together. Then we're gonna have to take the original roll pin from the factory and put it through this hole on the fork through that shift rod. Obviously there's two. I believe the second hole right there is not used. It's probably for a different variation and they just use this shaft for multiple assemblies. And then once that's pinned, this whole assembly will slide in and out, letting the teeth of this gear mesh in and out of this planetary. Now with it in there, you can see if I push out and this is rotating, it can be engaged with this ring here. Let me zoom in. So engage with the inner one, and then when you slide the shift fork in and rotate, engages on the inside, inner and outer, like that. All right, in the kit are these four 3 8 brass plugs. They use a 5 16 Allen. We're gonna install those in various spots around the case. So there's one, two, three, and four. Being that these are a tapered plug, I am going to put a little bit of Teflon tape on each of them and then thread them into those four locations. All right, the next part might be a little bit tough to explain. We are going to be installing seven of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven of these M10 studs. This is what's going to control the clocking of your case. Now I already know that this is the top of the case up here and that's the front. Let me see if I can make this look better. Okay, hopefully this angle I can explain it. This is the top of the case again up here, the surface. And this is going to be the back case. Obviously this goes on there and there's three holes on this one and three holes on this one. So if you wanted to rotate something as far this way as possible to clock it where the drive shaft is farther from the ground, you would put your stud in this hole and then through this hole. The inverse, of course, would be, and of course you could take this one and put it in any three of those notches, and this is a 10 degree space here. These are six degree spacings. If you put the middle notch to the middle one there, that's gonna be neutral, zero. And then of course, if you go the other direction, you're getting a bunch more in the other direction. So I'm pretty confident that I need to rotate it maxed out right there where this hole is aligned with this one. That gives me the maximum amount of what I believe would be clockwise rotation if you're looking at it from the back of the truck. We're gonna use these M10 studs. I'm gonna put some blue thread locker on them, thread them in like that all the way around. And then there's a large O-ring they give you. Of course, uh, don't lose it, don't cut it, don't mess it up. But it's gonna sit in the groove right here around this case when these two bolt together. So that'll bolt on there with that O-ring. All right, moving over to the rear case, we're going to install the um, shift collar, they're calling it. There's a tall side, it's hard, maybe hard to see in the video. There's a tall side and a short side. This one's inset a little bit. The inset short one is gonna go down, just like that. And this does not have, there's a master spline in here, but there's no master spline on the actual input shaft, so it doesn't appear that it matters where it goes. 
And then we're gonna put the snap ring back over it into this groove right here. All right, now we've got four of these M8 studs. I'm gonna install into these four holes on the actual rear case. Call it the original transfer case, if you'd like. And I'm using like just a little bit of blue thread locker on. And I'm installing, there, there's a long and a short side. I'm installing the short side into the case. we're going to turn it around and look at the base and if I haven't pointed it out already these actually are labeled base and lid there are four M8 threaded holes and we're going to put another four of these M8 studs into those four threaded holes all right the next step is actually going to be to bolt this base the Northwest Fab base here mm -hmm to the face of the transfer case. There's already two dowels in this base here and here that will align with the two dowels there and there. There's one on the top edge, you can barely see it. Those are gonna to bolt together. There's four studs in this one and there's four studs in that one. So they're gonna to go together just like that. But before we can do that, I need to put RTV on this edge and then we're gonna assemble them together. All right, got RTV all the way around. We're going to bolt these two cases together. With these two bolted together, we're going to use a flat washer, a lock washer, and an M8 nut on all of those studs. Four of them, of course, are sticking through this direction, and the other four are sticking through this way. All right, after getting this base bolted down to the transfer case with all these M8s, they all got tightened. It was a 13 millimeter for all of them. The only things left to do are to take the O-ring and put it on the lid, which is over here. So we're gonna put it in the big, the big groove. So we're gonna put this big O-ring on this groove here. Let me go work it around. And then the last thing that we can't forget about are the split bearings again, just like on the prior case. I'm gonna put a bunch of grease on these and I'm gonna put them down into this hole. Now with the O-ring on there and the split bearing greased into that tip, we're going to set this entire assembly down together. That split bearing in there will only fit one way, just like that. So you might have to rotate it around until it falls together. Now that we've got the lid dropped down onto the base and all of these M10 studs are sticking through, we're going to take a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut, and I'm going to use blue thread locker on it, and we're going to get them tightened down to one another. I guess it's We've got all these M10 bolts tight, so this whole assembly is together. The next best thing to do would be to check all the gears. That's going to be high four wheel drive. So that's high range, high range four wheel drive. That's high range two wheel drive. So we got high range four, and then we go over, up. We're in full neutral, so nothing moves. 
this one up. Now we're in low range four wheel drive with the back case. And if we slide this one back while they're all turning, now we're in double low range. So these, this output and this output, while both in four wheel drive, are both turning double low. So as you can see through that little demonstration, high and low for both the front and rear case as well as four wheel drive is working. The one last thing this transfer case still needs is the detent for the front high low. Currently nothing keeps this from sliding. There's no indication that you're in a gear. So we're gonna reuse that ball and spring and cap in the front pocket here. So we're gonna take the ball, slide it in there, take the spring behind the ball, and we're gonna put the same factory cap in there that uses the M6 Allen head. All right, with that ball in there, you can see it sticking out. Now when you change gears, it'll hop over like that into the next detent and it gives you that feeling of shifting gears. All right, after getting the case together, this essentially is a working case and it would it could be installed as is. There are already three in here installed, which it's a little bit premature. The instruction said to do it, so I did it, um, even though I didn't feel like they were gonna get used yet. There's still a few extra holes, one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, excuse me, four, this is a uh, dowel. So there's five extra holes and there's five extra studs with the kit, all M8. These are gonna get installed into the back of the transmission on the truck. And they also provide you with the flat washers, lock washers, and nuts to install it. The next thing we're going to work on in this project is installing the triple shifters. This is the triple shifter kit called the Trident from Northwest Fabs. This is designed to fit on their cases that we just built. And it's supposed to work in any orientation clocked either direction with no binding or interference. Everything you see here is what's included in the kit. You've got three of the actual uh, rods that are gonna stick up through the floor. We've got three billet shift knobs that'll thread onto these. You've got the post for the front case that's going to have a single shifter in it. And then it's got the two arms that'll go through it that give you the left and right. That gives you one, two, three shif shifters for triple stick. Then you've got this adapter for the rear that gives you your rear case twin stick. And then there's two turnbuckle threaded rods that are going to go between these turnbuckles. That gives us that assembly. Of course, you got all the hardware that goes along with it. We're going to get this installed in the case, and I'll detail how it's, in, how it's assembled and how it goes together. But I'd like to point out we won't be using any kind of RTV or gasket material between the shifter and the case. That's temporary. We're going to film this portion for the sake of the video. I likely may have to take a couple of these pieces off for the installation to the truck as everything I'm doing is custom and not factory. But for now in the video, we're gonna go ahead and install it the way you see it anyhow, without any gaskets. Here you can see our dual cases. Of course, this is our Northwest Fab aftermarket forward case, and this is the factory rear case. And the first thing we're gonna do is install the twin stick adapter assembly. I'm not really sure what they call this, but there's a little like filter material, I think it's a filter at least. It does pass all the way through. But we're gonna install this on the rear case with that filter and this little cover plate assembly facing forward. And there's two little fingers on the back that operate independently. Those are going to engage in this little hole and that little hole right there. So just get those two little fingers down in the shift rails like that. And then I'm just gonna throw two bolts in it for now. The next portion we're going to install is the front shift rod assembly. This is one only has a single finger. It's got an offset to one side and it has a NPT plug on this side. That's going to face backwards towards this other assembly. And of course, same concept, the little shift rod fingers got to go down in the shift rail just like that. And we'll throw two bolts in it to secure it. Next, we're gonna take this twin arm assembly. This will operate the rear case low range and rear case four wheel drive. There's a bolt going through it with a nut and a washer on it. We're gonna take that apart. 
I see no differences between the assemb the, you know, these two arms, so they could technically go this way on the case or this way. It wouldn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and install it like this with the threaded nut on the passenger side of the case. It should go through like that. Make sure you get it facing down. Slide the other one on the other side. You've got a washer and a nut that goes on this side. On the head of that bolt going through, they're actually using a quarter inch hex head on that, that fastener. And then a 14 millimeter seems to fit the nut on the opposite end. This is one of those things that you don't want to cinch down because then these will not rotate. So just, it's got a nylon nut on it, so just tighten it up just enough that there's no slop in the assembly, but they still rotate freely. As you see, they're not going anywhere. If you try to wiggle them, they're pretty, they're fairly snug. Up next, we're going to get these turnbuckle rods installed between these two heim joint turnbuckle ends. If you notice, there is a groove ground into one end of each of these. That indicates that it is a left-hand thread. The silver turnbuckle here is the left-hand thread, and the gold-plated, whatever color you call that, brass-colored one, is the right-hand thread. Knowing that these are opposite threads, when you turn it one direction, it's going to lengthen the entire assembly, and then when you turn it the other direction, it would shorten the relationship between these two hives. So for installation purposes, I'm just gonna barely thread this one on, just enough that it catches the thread, and then I'm gonna engage it with the other end and start threading it as well. That way it threads onto both of them at the same time. And as you can see, as we're drawing this in, it's threading on each end. We can see it moving this end. That would give us our adjustment between, between these two points if we needed to make some sort of adjustment in the cab. We're going to install the other rod on the other side the same way. Scratch that. We actually have to take one of these ends off of these arms, either on this end or this end. There's not enough room to fit this in there and thread it onto both. All right, so I just fumbled with both of these adjustable rods. It is easier to just take the nut off of the end of these little studs, take the little ends off, and then thread the rod onto each heim. Uh, you learn as you go. But for now, I've got each side on there. For whatever reason, especially this side, the threading between these two heims is a little bit tight. It's definitely, I mean, it's threading, it's the correct threads, but it's just a little snug. Almost feels like each end of the heim is maybe a little bit bent, but it still works, uh, it still threads. It doesn't seem like it's gonna touch anywhere, but we haven't started you know, the swing of the movement. For now, I just adjusted them both so that these two shifters here are pretty much dead vertical and in parallel to one another. And of course, you've got these little lock nuts on each heim. You can run these down to the shift rod and then tighten that nut against this one and it'll lock these in place. So for now, we're just gonna leave them right there. I may just snug them up. Up next, we're going to look at putting the three shifter rods in, the shift handles in, if you want to call them that. So this one has got a very major, you know, it's got a, a welded section in it and a very sharp 90 degree bend. I believe this one's going to go on the front right. Of course, this is set up for, I'm putting this in a truck with an automatic, so I'm trying to favor the shifters towards the driver's side, which is this side of the screen currently. Then we've got this longer one and the shorter one with similar bend profiles. We're going to put the longer one in this hole. We're going to put the shorter one in the back. With these three oriented like that, I believe is the intended installation for an automatic truck. This will get you away from the automatic shifter that would be right here inside of the vehicle. 
let's say let's face it as if you're in the driver's seat this would be sitting next to you you'd have the automatic shifter in the cab right here with the push button and then you're gonna have you know your three shifters of course these billet shift knobs they give you would thread onto each of these shift shafts like that with the three shifters installed into the shift linkage assembly down here we have to secure those using the fastener supplied here they have three smaller allen head bolts like that with three corresponding nuts then over here we've got three larger allen head bolts with their corresponding nuts and the way it works the smaller allen head bolt will engage with the hole in the actual shifter shaft and it'll go through this rear hole here so you slide it in you can slide the bolt through then you can take the corresponding nut and put it on the back side none of these holes are actually threaded the fitment just between the relationship between the rod and the the pocket that it's going into is actually pretty tight so threading in the bolt actually helped to just get it in there but it doesn't actually thread in just threading it helped pull it through and this one of course keeps it from the shifter from coming up or rotating around its bore and then they've got the two larger allens would go through and I'm probably going to install them you know opposite just for clearance of hardware putting them this way will actually clamp this assembly together and pinch pinch on the shift rod because right now it's it's got some wiggle to it and that would help eat up some of the wiggle but there's always going to be some play in these I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these bolts installed into the shifters And with that, the hardware's in, the shift rods are not going to come out of their respective sockets. I did have problems with this one. For whatever reason, that shift rod won't go down far enough for that bolt hole to go straight through. I'm not sure if the clearance issue is right up here at the top, or if it's bottoming out and it can't go far enough down. Uh, it seems to be some sort of machining issue on their end, or just they didn't account for a depth on something, I'm not sure. I'll figure that off off camera. It probably just needs to be the bottom of this rod probably needs to be sanded or, or ground so they can slide slightly farther in. But for the sake of this video, that'll hopefully be clear enough as far as how they assemble. I got this all assembled. I believe I showed that I've got the bolts all installed in the shifters. I did take this shifter out and sand right around this edge where it slides down in there. Indeed, it was hitting this upper lip. It wasn't that it was bottoming out. It was hitting this upper lip when it slid in there. So I just sanded on this shaft a little bit until it would go in and the, you know, the, the pin bolt that keeps it retained right there would go through. I went ahead and installed all three shift knobs. And then I actually fidgeted with these adjustment rails. This is entirely up to the individual installing this to get adjusted. This will change based on how much you've clocked your case and in which direction, how much adjustment you need in these. But essentially, I was trying to make sure that in every position that you shift these, they couldn't really hit each other in a detrimental way. So this is the closest they get. And I can make them touch, but in the truck, you would never knock one or the other out of the gear that it's in. So to me, that's close enough. And with those installed, I should be able to show you how it operates. With these three shift knobs on, the left, center, and right, I've marked them what they actually do. This far right one's gonna be your two four. So in the forward position, you've got two wheel drive. In the backward position, you've got four wheel drive. The center stick is gonna control the front case. And it'll give you forward, it'll give you your low range, and back it'll give you a high range. The left stick is gonna give you your rear case, low range, Low range in the front, neutral is one back, one more back gives you your rear case high range. You should be engaging your rear case low range before you ever use your front case. Doing your front case low range first 
will put a lot of strain on the rear case because it's multiplying the amount of torque you put through the cases. It's always safest to run the rear case first and then if you need to really slow it down, then use the front case. So with this triple shifter installed, everything operates as intended. Hopefully that last footage wasn't too shaky. Here's how I marked the shift knobs, low, neutral, high, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, low and high. And as you can see, these front two operate the two linkages, which will operate your rear case. And the center one's gonna operate just the low, high range in your front case. That will conclude the assembly of the triple shifter and dual transfer case build by Northwest Fab. For now, that's gonna conclude this video. Hopefully this helps somebody. If anybody's got any questions or comments, of course they're welcomed below. I'll respond to anybody that I can, but hopefully there's enough information in this video to help somebody else out. So thanks for watching.